Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on thoracolumbar fracture. Spinal fractures tend to occur at zones of mechanical transition. The thoracolumbar junction, T11 to L2, is the most commonly fractured region, with 40 to 60 percent of all spinal fractures occurring at these levels. The spine consists of three columns, which are anterior, middle, and posterior columns. Anterior column, consists of anterior longitudinal ligament, and the anterior half of the vertebral body and disc. Middle column, consists of posterior half of the vertebral body and disc, and posterior longitudinal ligament. Whereas posterior column, comprised of the posterior elements, such as the posterior ligamentous complex, including the facet joint capsule, ligamentum flavum, and interspinous and supraspinous ligaments, and the intervening vertebral arches. Thoracolumbar fractures can be classified based on their morphology according to the AO classification. Type A, compression injuries. Type B, distraction injuries. And type C, translation injuries. Clinical features. Some thoracolumbar fractures occur in patients with underlying osteoporosis, often the fractures only occurring from low-impact injuries. Whereas among younger patients, thoracolumbar fractures are usually the result of high-energy trauma. Patients will most commonly present with back pain. There may be varying degrees of neurological involvement present, depending on the level of spinal cord involvement. For investigations, perform a plain film radiograph as the first-line investigation, for those with suspected spinal column injury, without abnormal neurological signs or symptoms. Perform a CT scan if the radiograph is abnormal, or there are clinical signs or symptoms suggestive of a spinal column injury. Whilst CT imaging has become the mainstay for cervical fracture diagnosis, MRI imaging is also useful to assess for concurrent injury of soft tissue structures of the spine. This picture shows a plain X-ray showing compression fracture of L3. You can see it here. For management, patients with a suspected thoracolumbar fracture must be managed as per ATLS guidance, including appropriate immobilization. Restricting movement of the spine is recommended to prevent damage to the spinal cord. Non-operative management is often indicated in the more stable thoracolumbar fractures. Options include extension bracing and lumbar corsets. Operative management usually involves decompression and instrumented spinal fusion. This table shows the thoracolumbar injury classification and severity scoring system. Based on the morphology of fracture, the integrity of posterior ligamentous complex, and the neurological status of the patient. Injuries that score 5 or more are considered unstable, and are usually treated surgically. And those that score 3 or less are usually considered stable, and treated conservatively. That's all for this video. Thank you.